Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the latest edition of the Burgundy Brigade podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Goff, at BRG Brigade Kevin. Thanks again for joining us today, or whenever you happen to be listening to this. Joined, as usual, by my good friend and co-host, Aaron Music, at Avalangelist on the Twitter. Aaron, happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. November, I, you were just telling me, is quite busy for you. So, oh, you know, just 100 cars to photograph. <laughs> well, hopefully you get a nice couple days here to rejuvenate yourself and eat way too much food and then uh yeah <laughs> yeah day day i'm back at it on friday man whoo 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 business does no vacations yeah that's very true that is very very true well neither does the hockey season right I guess that's not entirely true. <laughs> they get little breaks here and there. Uh, but your uh, our Colorado Avalanche have been... Uh, whoa, something's beeping at me there. You still there? I'm still here. Okay, something was beeping at me. That was weird. Well, anyways, uh, our Colorado Avalanche have been going... Have been going for 20 games now. They currently Quarter stand... Pole. What's that? Quarter pole of the season. That's right. That's right. Uh, currently stand with a record of 10 wins, six losses, and four overtime losses. So if you're being that guy, they have 10 wins and 10 losses. Sit about fifth place in the tied for tied for fourth, I think, in the Central Division at the moment. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they will be no worse than tied for fourth going into Thanksgiving, assuming Dallas doesn't come back from a five nothing deficit with. Three minutes left in the second period. <laughs> well, crazy things have happened, but yeah, Dallas I is mean, currently first, getting in. Pittsburgh was here, so anything can happen. <laughs> Very true, man. Pittsburgh is currently handing Dallas their dinner a little uh, a day early here, in a mm. in a big way. So that that'll be nice for the Avalanche to go again to Avalanche play the Los Angeles Kings, the basement dwelling Los Angeles Kings tonight in Staples Center. After a uh, very interesting game out in Anaheim a few nights ago. Uh, We'll get to that in a sec. The last time we podcast was about four games into the season. Just before that Calgary game, that first Calgary game, that the Avs... uh, Just not play Calgary ever again. Yeah, seriously. What is good? Or, Or just... Cut off the game at two periods and call it call it good because that no, seems that to f- game is entirely Matthew Kachuk because fuck that yeah <laughs> man yeah so uh, since that time the Avs have been on a few ups and downs they had uh, they had that they've had they had a few really they had a good real nice road trip that first first uh, East Coast swing that they went on where they uh, had a shootout loss to the Rangers and then three straight wins at New Jersey, at Carolina, and at Philadelphia. Had a really fun game against Tampa Bay that they lost one to nothing in the Pepsi Center. That, and that could have easily been a 3-2 game either oh, yeah. way. I mean, Both the Avs did score a goal well. that game, but that uh, our favorite stupid offsides rule came into play again. Oh, yay. Uh, the NHL just doesn't observe, <sighs> observe the transitive property. <laughs> Just because his stick skate is off the ice, but it's behind the line, is it really behind the line? I guess. I, d- I mean, we can I mean, talk about that if we want. Because man, in the zone and you're in the zone, but I feel like it should be. Yes, or there's so many things that I will. <sighs> yeah, there's a lot to be discussed on that uh, on that front. It's just very officiating has. Um... And has been interesting this year. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, the Avs whooped up on Ottawa uh, after having kind of a slow start in that game. They had a then they just remembered what was going on, remembered how to hockey, and then boy did they hockey the living hockey out of Ottawa. They remembered they're better than them. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Matt Duchesne had two goals in that game uh, for the Senators, and then the top line went, "Oh yeah, this guy," and beat the living crap out of the team, uh, that, that team. They had a tough uh, back-to-back there against Minnesota, which they lost. Probably deserved a little bit better in that one. I was going to say, they played really well they against did play Minnesota. Well. They did indeed. Um, just one of those things. That happens sometimes on the road, and 
that's that's what uh, that's what they that that's what happened to them that night. It was in the middle that then kicked off a weird scheduling stretch where the Avs then had four nights off and then another back to back against Calgary and Vancouver, which was it's just so- atrocious. But I mean, it, not in not in the not in the typical way where it tends to be where, where like when it's Avalanche atrocious, it tends to be like they get just there they just get crushed. They're like it's like six to one. And they don't do anything the whole game. This was a six five loss to Calgary and then a seven to six overtime loss to Vancouver. Where well, they're... they're up five to one on Calgary. Oh my god. Stupid penal stupid penalty call on Ian Cole leads to them getting all the momentum and the abs just could not stop them. Yeah. I don't know what the hell was going on well, with that just, game. I mean they just stopped skating. It was that's the same thing that happened in the in the previous Calgary game. They jumped all over him. They got up to a big lead. A one thing happened uh, in that in the first one. It was Jake T. Confer got rocked by Sam Bennett, and then they just stopped skating. And when they stop skating, they the, their entire game goes to hell. And it, it, and, it, and, it, and then a team like Calgary, who is incredibly skilled, just just goes downhill on them the entire time. And it's so, just, it's just, and- it will. My favorite coaching phrase, maybe at least in a long while, it was from Bednar in that stretch where he said, yeah, you can't check with your eyes. Yeah, I agree. That was so smart, so great. I loved it. Yeah, I, that was, I, I agree. I love that, I love that, uh, that comment because that's exactly what it was. It was just a whole bunch of watching. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it just, I mean, and I will. I've, it's hard to blame Varley too much, but in that third period, he really fell off an edge too. Kind of, I mean, everybody just went, yeah, forget it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Vancouver, two halves instead of three periods. Yeah, exactly. Vancouver, the exact same thing was just. Vancouver I mean, was just a that a was game. Everything just the wheels fell off, and Grubauer wasn't great. Grubauer was awful that game. He was. Awful, just yeah. bad. Uh, you know, on that subject, if I had my, if I could pick, I would extend Simeon Varlamov right now. Oof. I, I would sign him another four years. Well, that'd be that'd make some that'd make some noise, wouldn't it? Considering they got Groovy for two more after this one. But you got the expansion coming, so you basically assume that you're just going to lose one of them from there. Well, that's wow. <laughs> I don't know how to think about that, how to, how to feel about that. That's, uh, I mean, they've gone out and traded to, to get Grubauer to, to then just accept the fact that you would either be losing him or Varley essentially in the, in the expansion draft, man. Would you rather lose him or would you rather lose Kerfoot? Uh, probably Kerfoot. Really? Yeah. I don't. We think are so. we are so much better set up within the system in a couple of years to deal with the loss of a winger than we are to deal with the loss of a goaltender. Uh, I feel like you can find a backup goaltender, not every anywhere, but it's easier to find. I like Chloe Kerfoot's developing though. I, I do. Like- I do as well. I mean, that might. I mean, by the end of the year, that might change. Uh, I suppose, but uh, right, right now, if you're going to ask me which one you're going to, you, I'd want to give up. I would. I'd probably give up the the the, the winger personally. That's just me, though. Uh, the Avs continued their little slide, then having another four days off, losing to Nashville in a, an absurdly officiated game. Oh my gosh, that one was that was just oh my god! All just I mean, <laughs> they were playing seven on five the entire. Time. It was it was it was one of those games where you just sit there and go and just you throw your hands up and go. As soon as a questionable call, as soon as a, as soon as a, as soon as a questionable or 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 big moment came, you just went. Well, you know it's going to go Nashville's way because the that's just how the officiating set it up. It was just one of the. It was so clear. It was so bad. It was so poorly officiated. I can't even, I mean, I don't even want to get into because I'll just get mad and I'll sound like an idiot. But anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, they then yeah, finished. We not either one of those things, now would we? Yeah, never. <laughs> uh, they have finished their little slide, then going and getting 
uh, getting beat in Winnipeg, uh, score five to two. Yeah, Nashville Winnipeg was was tough. It shows a lot of how far this team has to grow. Yeah, and those are the those are the two that two teams that still scare me in the league. Mm-hmm. It, as far as Winnipeg, Nashville, Tampa Bay, that's about it. Yep. Everyone else, the Avs can play with. It. Everyone else, the Avs are right on the level with. The the other those. Three are Stanley Cup contenders, though. Yeah, and to, I mean, to the Avs' credit, they had they skated very well with Tampa Bay, and oh, you, yes. barring Tampa, the they match up better against Tampa Bay than they do yeah. Nashville, who loves to grind you out, and Winnipeg, who loves to hit the shit out. Of you. Well, and let's be honest, the Avs the Avs had two extra goals taken away from them in that Nashville game. That was a three three game that just happened to be four to one in the end. Yeah. Nashville doesn't scare me nearly as much as Winnipeg. Does. Oh yeah, Winnipeg. Winnipeg is, is is they 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 have the especially in Winnipeg. You just you just you just tally that down as a loss for the Avs. They they don't win in Winnipeg. Uh, no one really wins in yeah. Winnipeg. Very true. <laughs> Winnipeg is eight two and two to start the season. Holy crap! They have eight, already played tw- already played twelve games at home. Versus seven on the road. Screw you, scheduling. Yeah, seriously. I mean, the Avs seem to be the one, the one team in the division who has done nothing but go on the road. So, so yeah. you're gonna just, uh, you're just gonna play on the road now, then, eh? Yeah, well, we'll just go take a walk. <laughs> we, we should get 41 home games, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, eventually. Well, I'm... <laughs> I mean, they're all gonna come all at the same Nashville's time. Nashville's played 10 home games. Winnipeg 12. Minnesota 10. Uh, the Avs have played eight. Yep. Dallas has played eleven. Chicago, gosh, they've played an ungodly eleven. Their just record is so bad. And St. Louis has played twelve terrible games in front of their home, home <laughs> crowd. Yeah. So, well, I mean, the good some good news on that is, of course, that means at some point the Avs are going to have a nice long home stretch. Yeah. Probably, usually it comes right around January. Yeah. Seems like every year they're home during June, from like Christmas through middle of January. Yeah. Well, then once the Avs finish that little five-game schneid, they uh, now have had points in the last four games. They beat Edmonton. They beat Boston. They had an overtime loss that to Boston Washington. That game was in- incredible. That Just- was truly watching the Avs' top line assert their will. Like, they were challenged. I felt like they were kept, just hearing them talk. They felt like they were challenged to be the best line and play the best line. And so they're like, okay, and they just steamroll them. Yeah. It, it's just, it shows that little extra gear when, especially McKinnon gets a little pissed. Yeah. <laughs> Where he's like, oh, what do you, best line Boston? Oh, okay. Well, well, how about those goals? Yeah, it's 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 nice that when they there there's some some players that when they get mad, uh, it hurts them. They they get frustrated and you know things are just not the same for them. Other than there's other players that when they get mad, you've gone. Oh no, I've just I've just awoken the beast. And yeah, make make Peter Forsberg mad. Why don't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Ask people how that went for them. I mean. Make Peyton Manning man for for a minute. See yeah. what happens to you. It's it's just, it's and luckily it seems that McKinnon, uh, though he is, can be a bit moody from time to time, uh, when he gets mad, he does it the he gets mad the good way, and there's punishment for the other team on the scoreboard. Mm-hmm. Like oh, I'm just gonna go win now. Yeah. Uh, then they, of course the Avalanche had the overtime loss to Washington, and then had a. Uh, rousing overtime victory against Anaheim on Sunday. So overall, these first twenty games, what are your what do you this, what what's what are your thoughts for, on the team here? They're ahead where they were last year, which we know how they played from the, from this place on. Basically, Thanksgiving is where they just really picked it up mm-hmm. last year. They're a team. They have the best line in. In hockey, not because of talent, but because of the way it works together. McKinnon and Rantanen are two special, special talents. And they're so having that right-left combination with them. Once 
one shoots left, the other shoots right. It adds so much of a dimension. And then Landeskog just creates a lot of space for them to do their work. It's the best line. I will hear nothing else. I would have said Boston, but Boston can't play with the Avs. About the oh. only thing that the bo- that Boston's top line has over the Avs is defense, I would say. Yeah, defense, face-offs uh, go hand-in-hand. Hand. Yeah, but, yeah. And, uh, but other than that, I, I mean, that that's, that's honestly, one thing. that first but... period against Boston, the top line asserted so, itself defensively and on face-offs. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. It's kind of hard for you to judge the that line playing defense when it has the puck the entire Exactly. Game. I was just about to say that. I was going to say that the, the 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 advantage that it has going for it is that a lot of times it doesn't have to play defense because it's too busy putting points up on the board for the for for their team. They're 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 just they just have the puck and are and are and are scoring more often than not. Um and of course, so and obviously we have to. The, the Nathan McKinnon comes up a lot in all of that. He's he's a dynamic player. Absolutely, he leads the team in, or he's tied for the team lead in goals scored right now, with Gabe Landeskog, who had they who both have thirteen goals. Uh, but Miko's the one that they can't stop. Yeah, Miko with his with his body type and the way that yes. he uses it. Oh my God, Miko Rantanen. I mean. Whoa! We all expected him to be good again this year. Uh, that that we that there was that there was an, an expectation that he would likely be another uh, a point of game player again. I mean, we 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 said a lot of times last year is was it possible to have a quiet eighty point season? Because if so, Miko did it last year. But there's nothing quiet about what he's doing right now. Mm-mm. There is absolutely he is a, is he leads the league in scoring thirty two points. Leads the league in assists, twenty four assists. I mean, he, the, his he, watching him just he he is doing that 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 thing that <laughs> that Peter Forsberg used to do. And who, Yarmy Yager did. That, and Yarmy, yeah, he, he's 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 definitely got that 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 type of game to him where the, he gets the puck. The puck that yeah. he has is. Totally army order. Where he they just they, you just basically he shields it and basically says try to get it. I, I dare you. Use try it. If you get it, it's a penalty. If yeah. you don't, it's a goal. Your choice. Exactly. Again, he's either then putting it in the net or setting somebody up. But oh my goodness, that game tying goal against Anaheim was ex- is exactly is like Exhibit A. He just <laughs> he get he gets the puck, knows where the defender is, and as he's be, as this guy is trying to shove him off the puck. He's get he's getting the lay of the land, seeing where people are going, seeing where he needs to go, and by the time he moves, it's just it's over at that point. You've not been able to force him off it. You're not gonna be able to force him off it after it. He knows where it's going. He knows it's in your net. Give up. <laughs> yeah, it feels like waves trying to tip over an aircraft carrier. Yeah, it's. I mean, it is. It is exceptional watching him play right now. It is. It is and amazing. I want to send the biggest gift basket to. San Jose and New Jersey, because do you think they'd like to go back specifically New Jersey and not take Pavel Zaka? Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> or, I mean, Timo Meyer's doing okay, but Rantanen, I mean, could you imagine Rantanen doing this kind of stuff with Pavelski and Couture? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have to think about that. <laughs> right? we, we get our own special player. McKinnon is special, but I, it's the way that he plays with Ranton and that makes both of them elite. It's, I mean, it, th- this top line is something ridiculous right now, and I don't care what goes on in the rest of the season for this team. The, I do not see the slightest excuse to possibly break this lineup. The only way to break that lineup is through injury. Yeah, I agree. So, I agree. On the, <laughs> the, the, I mean, and... That Anaheim, the, the Anaheim game is is like Exhibit Twenty Six as to why, right? They don't, yep. they, they, the team may be going, not going so great, but then that that when that line gets rolling and decides, all right, it's on, they will just take it over. Rantanen's only on the pace for one hundred thirty one points. That holy cow! <laughs> just wow. <laughs> and it, I mean, 
And you sit and I mean, you look and go, man. Well, that's probably that's hard to, but at the, that's hard to think that he might keep that pace up. But at the same time, we're twenty games in. Yeah, it's this isn't this, a fluke. You could actually, if you extrapolate over since that line was put up, put together, it the the numbers are very very similar. McKinnon's a schlub. He's only on our pace for 118. Yeah. 118 roundup. <laughs> it's pretty. But he's on the pace for 54 goals. So he, him and Landis got both scoring it up this year incredibly, and I like it. It is nice. It is. Uh, I mean, it's. I'm not a huge fan of those like seven to six games where both teams are just playing absolute crap defensive games. It's like, no, oh, the look, the pucks. These are still outliers, but it's more in the line of five to three yeah. or four to two. Though, much less the three to one Minnesota Wild. I'm bored to tears. Can we just get this to overtime, please? Yeah. I'm with if you. you can't skate in this league, you can't win. St. Louis is figuring that out quickly. Indeed. Uh, other positive things going for the Avs right now. Their power play is currently sitting at th- uh, second in the NHL at 30.3%, which is freakishly high. Only, only be, only, the only team ahead of them right now is Winnipeg at 32.1%. Mm, Patrick which, Laney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do it, right? Uh, and it's not just the top line doing it. In fact, you could make a very strong argument that the second power play unit has been a better overall power play unit for the Avalanche. It actually ties into my neck. Who's really impressed me has, um, has been Carl Soderberg. Oh, yeah. Carl Soderberg has been phenomenal. Offense, defense, he's been, he's been raising the level of lesser line mates to actual competitive status. He's just been fabulous. It's... Um, and of Ian course, Cole, he, Ian Cole has been phenomenal. Ian Cole has been an excellent get, absolutely. Um, uh, Colin Wilson has had a strong start. He's is, is he still injured at this point? I didn't even see what happened to him. I I didn't see anything that he just was like oh he's injured. He just suddenly wasn't in the lineup in Anaheim. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so hopefully he's back in. But he, again, he's had a strong start. He's, I mean, he's not a guy that you expect to be a long-term solution at the second line right wing, but he has filled in admirably and effectively. I'm not going to come out and say that he's totally a legit top six forward right now, but I mean, he's he's doing the job and he's and he's helping and he's producing too. So the, he has done. He has certainly out uh, outshone his expectations from the start of this uh, this year to this point. And uh, hopefully he will continue, when, especially as he gets back into the lineup, hopefully he will continue uh, all that he's been doing. But he's, he's sat very well with, uh, with Kerfoot and, uh, and Jost for the most part. There's been a random, <laughs> random few games there, mostly while Jost was hurt, where Sheldon Dries filled in on that second line. And stunningly enough, that line worked. Yep. Uh, Alexander Kerfoot has impressed me as well. He's got four. He's quietly got fourteen points in twenty games. Yep, he was he was both our one of our guys that we both looked at and thought he would probably fall off his point pace from last year, mostly because his shot percentage was really high. Uh, but mm-hmm. again, his point his point production is is uh, at this point above where that was last year. And his faceoff wins percentage is sixty one point four, which is really strange. Because he was not good at face-offs last season. I struggled no, at the he strength. said he really dedicated some yeah. time to it so that he knew when he was taking a draw what he was looking for. Yeah. I mean, he's leading the abs by a clear margin. Yeah, absolutely. Lance wins 55%, which is an odd stat to say. <laughs> and, and Jimothy Timothy Comfer is 55 as well. The rest are below below 50. Yeah, the Ladislav Kamenev, has, he's starting to catch in. He's starting to get... Nail down a spot on the bottom six. I, I I I agree. A Kam, Kamenev has. Uh, I think he is showing that he can stick and that he can play and and is a is a. He can play the defense uh-huh. already, and he's just getting his offense kind of churning. Yeah, he only he's three he's, in fifteen games. He's getting more and more time as uh, the, 
thrown his way as the, as the games go. He found his way onto a, to a penalty kill unit. He also occasionally finds himself on the second power play unit from time to time. Uh, so the, he's he's certainly gaining some trust there from Bednar, uh, and and that's that's it's another guy that can really use his body to protect the puck. Yeah, good size and and does that very very well. Absolutely, does that very very well. Um, Kinnan has eighty seven shots. Yeah. <laughs> the next closest is Landis Scott with fifty nine. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's good. That's absolutely what you want out of McKinnon. You want him shooting the lights out. Yeah, overall, the Avs still need a top six forward, a winger who can score. They, I, I would love to see them put some... The line I would love to see would be Wilson when he's healthy with Soderberg in Comfort when he's healthy. That's that, a good third line. That is that is a good third line. And then let Dries, Kamenev, and Calvert be your fourth line, spark plug, energy line. Mm-hmm. That leaves Kerfoot, Jost, and Ghetto? For now, I would get someone to replace Ghetto in that lineup. It could be Martin Kaut. It could be William Nylander. It could be what I would do, and we're going to talk about it. would involve trading the Ottawa pick to get someone. Oof. Oof. It, basically, with St. Louis being as bad as they are, you want to do this now, or do you want to do this later? I'll, I'll do it now. All right, you can, let's, let's go for it. Let's do this. Uh, Prepare would, your ear holes. <laughs> I would take the Ottawa pick, which Ottawa's being pretty mediocre. They won't be terrible. Now, St. Louis has lost their first-round draft pick. They traded it in the Ryan O'Reilly deal. And I do believe I'm pick, clicking it here um, that that pick would go. Basically, it's the same way of Ottawa. They they can opt to keep it this year, in which case they send theirs next year, no matter what. So what I would do to entice them to lose because they're losing that pick, send the Ottawa pick to St. Louis. For Vladimir Tarasenko. Do you think they'd take it straight up just for that? No, I don't think so, but I can dream. Yeah. <laughs> but if you think about what... Think about the, the guy that most people want is Nylander or Panarin. Those are the... Or Mark, Mark Stone. Both All of those are going to get right around $8 million and above. I know Panarin's looking to get into devil digits, which is not going to happen here. Uh, Tarasenko signed four more years beyond this one at $7.5 million. That's a pretty good cap hit. It's, there isn't a no-trade clause, so you don't have to worry about that. 26-year-old, right wing, throw him with Kerfoot and Jost, and you have yourself a second line. That's interesting. So it's bold. It probably... St. Louis would probably want some prospects, but this is only if the pick improves to being right around top 10. And if St. Louis decides, well, this was fun. We're going to blow it up and kind of do a rebuild. These are all long shots, but that's, that's what I would love to have. I mean, if it was one for one, you might be able to talk me into that. I don't just, I, I, I don't. I can't imagine there's any way that that would that would go down one for one, unless Chiarelli somehow becomes GM of St. Louis. <laughs> well, hey, I guess there's some hope for that. Uh, <laughs> um, I I am still very, I'm very loath to do anything with that Ottawa pick. Just because that that won't, that won't necessarily be up in the like in the top three, which it may or may not, we still don't know what's going to go on with the lottery because the lottery has been absolutely bananas. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you look at the names of the teams that are going to be in it, you have you have Vegas, you have Pittsburgh, St. Louis, Los Angeles, Chicago. Moment, yeah, yeah. There are so many. There are so many conspiracy theories right for those. Specifically, Pittsburgh sitting there at twenty nine. 
with 18 points in 19 games. You know that they're going to hit. They're going to have a run. Well, yeah, Pittsburgh's going to have. You know, a run. hey, it's been a while since Crosby. You know, hey, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> You're you're not wrong. You're not wrong about that. I will absolutely give you that. It's all about I don't like conspiracy theorists and I don't like conspiracy theories. For but sure. At the same point. Pittsburgh worries me. Well, and here here's what I'll say about this. Currently Ottawa is nine, nine, and three. They are a whopping three points ahead of the standings against uh, in front of Pittsburgh, who is the bottom of the Eastern Conference right now. Right, this, three points ahead of Pittsburgh, four again ahead of yeah, St. Louis. This is far. It's, I mean, they they are. I there there is there is a long way to go on this, and there is one hundred. I I I don't I don't think I don't think anybody is under the under the illusion right now that Ottawa is going to be the tire fire we all hoped they would be at the start of the year. That being mm-hmm. said, I don't think they are still anywhere near competitive their their season is kind of on a fulcrum they're four points out of a playoff spot and also five points out of the bottom yeah this is they they will i i think they are still in in a position where they're going to i mean their goal differential is still minus 13 which is the worst in the eastern conference yeah and they have the fourth fifth most goals in the entire league if that continues if that can, I mean, <laughs> oh, they have the second most goals in the entire league. That which is this is they're they're so weird right now. They're so they're scoring a lot, but they're giving up way more. At some point, I feel like the the scoring is going to dry up because they don't they don't have de- they don't have a defense. They have goal de- goalies. The Craig Anderson is a thousand years old, and he's he's broken breaking down as we as we as in front of everyone's eyes. And who's their backup? Uh, good question. Someone like McKenna, something. I he was in the in the net the other night. Where I was I was I was watching that weird yeah. shootout they were having with Florida, uh, where it, they got down um, like four goals, and then suddenly it was they were within one, and then they lost seven to five. I mean, they're yeah. they're not a tire fire, but I, I've been keeping track. I wish I'd done this from the start of the season, but at the end of every week, I started this on October twenty eighth. I take a look at where the Avs are with their first round draft picks. Twenty mm-hmm. eighth, they they own the picks twenty nine and seven. Uh, they then a week later they owned the eighth and nineteenth picks, and then the ninth and eighteenth picks, and then this last week was not fun. They owned the fourteenth and eighteenth picks. Yeah, so yeah. Ottawa just moving north. Yeah, I don't. I mean, they're. I don't expect them to continue that trend. No. Luckily, there. I don't think anyone's going to beat out Los Angeles for that bottom spot, though. No, anyway, L.A. is I, man. It's going to be bad. Los Angeles is worse. Yeah. Uh, aside from aside from the 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 whole the the trade aspect of it, um, I still I, I I it it just seems unlikely that the ads would suddenly change pace. With with their with their with their plan for for finding their 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 top line their top their second line scores yeah, they I mean let's just rob Tarasenko of us and I want to get them back. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. Um, then again, knocking the the other sweet revenge I have is we we knocked them out of the playoffs on the last day last year, and this year we t- knocked them out of a lottery pick that. This year, that would be amazing. Um, but I mean, they, they, the the abs are clearly dedicated to their guys, uh, which is fine. And and in, and there there is no. I don't feel like there needs to be this rush to go get that guy that's going to fill up your second line to make that Stanley Cup push this year. I don't think that needs to happen because. There, there. For one, there are guys in the system that can get there. The, I mean, you want to talk about a guy who may be there within a year? You can look at Martin Kaut. Uh AJ Greer is having a hell of a year. In the yeah, don't in, see him as a top six guy. He's no, I maybe not, but still a good bottom six, though. Right. Uh, th- there's, there's just there, there's far more. Where was my prospect page? Ah. 
Colorado. I feel like the Avs are about to over turn over a bunch of their bottom six. I agree. I do think they are as well. Uh, but and then at the same time, their next year's free agency class has got some dudes that yes, you'd have to pay, but there's go- there are some guys that 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 are are hitting their first UFA year that likely aren't going to want to stay where they are. That could come to the av- that could see the avalanche as that team. That man, if I'm there, this team suddenly becomes a big time contender. Three guys specifically that I see, all of them are 26 years old, and one of them may not. You know, I, I don't know how realistic each of them is, but I think one of them you could realistically convince to come to the avalanche. There is Mark Stone. Artemi Panarin. Who we know Mark Stone wants the hell out of Ottawa. There's Artemi Panarin. And then there is Jeff Skinner. Ooh, I didn't realize Skinner. Oh, Skinner, yeah. 26, going to be UFA. Everybody is, it's well documented that Skinner and Landy are best bros. They are, they go back to juniors. Really? They go back to, they go back to juniors. They are, they are close guys. And I feel I I mean I and I would love me some Jeff Skinner on this team. That again now you you don't have to trade anything. You keep that Ottawa pick. Uh, you you may have a guy who who could do a little bit of recruiting to convince him to to get over here. I think one of those three is a realistic option to get here. That's fair. The other the the elephant in the room is the Ranton in contract. Oh, absolutely, and that's gonna be that's gonna be your interesting thing because for one, do you, uh, for one, of course, you have to figure out exactly how much you're gonna pay that dude. Uh, two, then it be the other. You 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 may you're gonna need to look at how that might end up impacting McKinnon's next contract because McKinnon's not far behind on Rantanen as far as contracts are concerned. Uh, d- which then may ask lead to another question about does that become a long term deal or is that sort of a middle term deal, and of course you have to now think about well how is this going to impact our roster in terms of the the impending uh, expansion draft that's going to be coming out for Seattle, right? All of those fun little things to figure out. Oh, the <laughs> Ranton in contract just. If they can keep it under ten million, I'm going to be happy. I will count that as a win because man, oh man, that that guy's if he leads the league in points, oh, give him all the money. Yeah, I mean, at this point already, you're basically saying give him all the money. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's crazy. Oh, you're just hoping that he doesn't. I mean, you're, you're hoping that he does, but you're also hoping that he doesn't get too many points because if he, if he if he has that full on 130 point season, well. Great. I don't think it's going to hit as hard as I, because they're going to, it, everyone's pretty resigned to the fact that Tyson Berry's not long for the team. So they clear the 5 million off that, that helps. Yeah. And of course that one all depends on who, who or what comes back and in, in that, uh, yeah. in that particular move though. I don't know. I mean, it's. And the other reason I'm not too, too concerned is the Seattle money that's going to come in is going to bump that cap. That's very true. The cap is definitely going to be moving up. So we're not, we're, it's, it's going to be, the, I mean, it's going to be a healthy contract, obviously, but it, the, I, the abs may be in a, in a better, uh, in a better uh, spot to deal with it than we think. Yeah. And it's not backbreaking by any minute. No. By any measure. They'll have Landis Scott coming up in 20, 20- 2021 that'll they he won't even get close to ufa they'll extend him yeah i would uh, expect that too i, I don't expect Lando scott to play for anyone else but the abs same just unless he goes into just you know unless he does the whole jerome mcginla thing and decides to play for a thousand years I, i'm hoping in this paradigm he, he's won a cup by then and he doesn't have to do that i agree because Jerome McGinley went searching for a cup. Yes, yes, he did. That's why he did what he did. But after that, I mean, they've got Soderberg, who's 4.7, comes off the books out next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Calvert, 2.8. Nieto, 1.9. Uh, 
None of those break the bank. Kerfoot's going to be interesting. See what he gets. I would put him three, four at tops. Um, Sheldon Dries isn't going to be expensive at all. In nope. fact, I just qualify him and expect he signs his offer. Yeah. Rantanen, just after that, not going to break the bank. Zadorov, not. He hasn't played enough to get him anywhere close to Eric Johnson's number of six. For sure. So. And if his agent really wants to get into seven or eight, I'm actually okay shipping him out then. If he wants seven or eight, he can get that paid elsewhere. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't expect Zad to be going anywhere. I almost expect that uh, we'll see an arbitration thing going on with him. Yeah, he is arbitration eligible, so. Yeah. So it would make, it's, it, and, it's, and honestly, it seems that the arbitration, of course, is like the, the is a dirty word around uh, contract. Uh, contract time and free agency, but it I, th- I feel like arbitration has gone away from the the evil, terrible thing that it, that it used to be. Especially with the Avalanche, I mean they did they went to arbitration with Tyson Berry, no issues, no issues. They've had ult- other players the past couple of years. I think Andrew Ghetto, his first year here, elected arbitration, and they came to a deal beforehand. It, I mean, well, the arbitration used to be a thing with the Avalanche that if you even thought about arbitration. Pierre Lacroix would get a weird sense in his brain and trade you. Um, and arbitration nowadays is more of an extended negotiation period. Yeah. It just seems that, that, that all the parties involved have gone away from the whole thing of the whole circus of that, you know, that well-known story with, I forget which goalie it was right off the top of my head, but who came out of the, came out of the arbitration hearing in tears because of what, uh, the team said in the during the hearing and was, was that the same. Because they gave that was Chicago and the arbiter ruled that Niemo Niemi was going to get like what five million or something. I, I don't remember. I think it was. I think it was far. I think it was farther back than that. Uh, but it's possible. But I mean, especially with the Avalanche, it just seems like they basically just leave lean it. Put it out here and say, look, and, and just make it all about the numbers. That here are the comparables. This is where we see them, and this is where this is the contract that we have offered based off of these comparables. Uh, and they, it doesn't seem like they make a big deal about it. They, it's it's a means to an end, right? It's a means to an end, and it's if you look at it that way, I think it takes that the 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 whole boogeyman factor out of it, and I don't think it needs to be looked at as some sort of a failure. As I mean, people. I mean, there's, there, it seems that p- there are still folks out there who I remember seeing on social media. I don't remember people specifically, but that like once, especially when Tyson Berry w- was being uh, taken to arbitration, uh, people were like, "Ah, oh, Joe Sackick, oh, screw that guy. He's using arbitration. What a terrible GM. And then like, then they get, they come to this nice deal and it's like, well, maybe we just need to chill out about arbitration a little bit. We're looking into the future. This the immediate future. The Avs are a playoff team. Yeah, they they one they're good enough to be a playoff team. That top line can carry them most of the way there, and their secondary scoring plus really good defense and two starter quality goaltenders. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll get you the rest of the way there. It's also helped out that the the teams outside the playoffs right now. Edmonton, Chicago, Anaheim, Arizona, Vegas, St. Louis, Los Angeles. I don't see a whole lot of those teams making a run. Edmonton is, we know what they are. They're McDavid and Bust. (laughs) And Chicago is old, slow, and desperately needs new blood. Yeah. It's what we go to uh, all the Blackhawks teams because one of my wife's friends her boyfriend is a blackhawks fan he's from chicago he's like yeah we're playing just as bad as last year if not worse Mm. and he's like i'm just done with the season already you you have patrick kane and that's about it jonathan taves is okay he's fallen off considerably and they're both being paid 10 million a year yeah, that's the that's the danger with those huge money long term contracts. Is I mean, you get them Especially a, for the age that they were. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at what that for like Amico Ranton and the dude's twenty two. Mm-hmm. That you you expect that you'll be 
you'll be pretty good for you'll get a pretty decent amount for six or seven of those eight years that you're given him. <laughs> and and then you look at the other teams there in the Pacific Division, and I think it's going to be about eighty-seven points to get that third spot in the Pacific Division, which yeah. means you just have to beat out the top bottom two Central teams. Yep. I've already talked about Chicago and St. Louis is unless they'd have to go on a tremendous run. Even if they win both their, say they win both games at hand, that would put them at 21 points, which would put them three back. That's at this stage, it's not too insane, but it's pretty insane. Usually the teams that are in the playoff picture and Thanksgiving go to the playoffs. So where are some areas that we could see the Avalanche improve? We've said a lot of real positive things thus far, and obviously there's been a lot of positive going on, but that's, we can't forget that five-game schneid, which definitely definitely brought up some things that made that, that are, that are make it very apparent that the Avs still have some things to address. Uh, consistency. They need to play the same way beginning to end every game and bring that consistent effort. Because if they do, they're going to run most teams out of the building. Yeah, no, I completely, completely just, agree. Their engine starts and stops, starts and stops. And sometimes I feel like they were, they rely too much on that off that, that top line mm-hmm. to make up for it. Um, they they need to solidify their what they want their second, third, and fourth line to be because it feels like a mishmash and a misfit toys kind of thing. Yeah, Soderberg's line is the most well defined, but that's mostly because of Soderberg. Exactly. That yeah. Uh, Jost Kerfoot, I've liked, but they need a third component to to that. Could be Andrew Ghetto. Doubt it. Yeah. Term for that, I feel. I, while that's a, while that is a, a speedy, shifty, skilled line, it's also very small. And we saw when they the when they when the, when they were together last year through a lot, they got they got they were. They got beat up a little bit in their Which own is zone. why Wilson was with that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, he, for me, perhaps my biggest uh, my biggest thing with this team, and it's really been the biggest thing for this team since the start of the year, has been the penalty kill. Has got to improve. They are under eighty percent at this point this year, and, and while their percentage was very high at the start of the year, that was to me that was largely because the goaltending was so strong at the start of the season. Uh, they that the PK they have strong, strong games and weak games with penalty kill. Well, I mean, I want to say they've given up a power play goal in in they they had a really long streak of games of giving up a power and they, it may still be going because they gave up another one against Anaheim the other day. It's it they they just give up too many power play goals. They give up too many shots. I feel like the PK is very reactive instead of uh instead of whoa whoa yeah like that uh <laughs> it's very it, i feel like the pk is very reactive it doesn't it doesn't challenge nearly enough and there are lots of holes that a lot of teams are finding and that 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 it just relies too much on strong goaltending than it than necessarily on uh protecting a goaltender there like the edmonton game they were fantastic. Uh, they they were they were in Edmonton's face. Never really gave him an opportunity to set anything up. Uh, the one moment that they needed a huge save, Barley was there. Uh, but th- throughout the rest of the season, it's just been there's been there's been far too many shots against on the penalty kill, and they've gotta they've gotta figure something out there. I feel like they will. I'm not actually super worried about the penalty kill. I feel like it's going to improve over time, especially since one of your key penalty killers, Blake Como, is gone, and they're trying to figure out. And then the penalty kill was a lot better when JT Comfort was in there, and they've missed him a lot on that penalty. They certainly kill. have. I definitely, I definitely agree on that. Uh, I another. One, I would love to see Landeskog down on the PK a little bit more. He's another guy who has. In the, has done a lot of penalty killing in his career, and I get maybe wanting to save him for some of the for save some of his his energy to keep up with McKinnon and whatnot. But he's one of the best defensive forwards on the team. 
I don't know. I feel like I feel like he would be he would be a good guy to throw throw out there a little bit more than they do. He's out there. For, uh, he's been out a, f- a few times recently, but I, I think it, I, I'd like to see it a little bit more. I would I would like to see the Avs shoot more. They're twentieth in shots per game. Yes, twenty second in shots per game, and most of that I feel like is top line driven. The top line shoots a lot. But the, this is a. Can you think about where we were two years ago, three years yeah. ago, and just the, the growth that they've shown? I'm, I'm really liking that we're picking. They were drilling down on the third line, the penalty kill. No, I agree. I, defense. Absolutely. It's, it's nice not having to wonder who's going to be on our top line. Why, <laughs> why is Ryan O'Byrne on defense? Blow what? it up! Blow it oh, up! Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I'm with you. <laughs> I am with you. No, it's uh, you're you're absolutely right. It's been a it's it's the the progress that this team has shown has been wonderful, uh, especially considering, especially with I mean, everyone always goes back to that forty eight point year because man, that was as bad as it can possibly get for for a team. And uh, just a couple years out, and the Avs have uh, have shown a lot of resilience and are are right in the middle of the playoff hunt, right where they should be, and. Yeah, and they found a coach that I feel feel like works in the modern NHL. Yeah, I I do like Bednar with this team. There's some there's some things with him that uh that 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 I think are still warrant criticism. Uh, his so insistence stubborn. his insistence on keeping Carl Soder, on weighing Carl Soderberg down with Matt Nieto and insert uh, third insert uh, other winger here. Uh, <laughs> year after year and, and time after time uh, is 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 frustrating. Uh, I I can't say that I'm a huge fan of the way he's been dealing with Zadorov. Yes, Zadorov has some consistency issues that is uh, needs dealing with, but the the random benching and the the healthy scratch I was not a fan of, especially coming up against uh, against Washington, knowing the difference that Zad can make. Uh, and choosing to put Barbario in, out there, and it, it, I think that's one of those things that, even though the game was close, it 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 hurt the team. Yeah, and I feel like Bednar likes to push players that he knows can do better. If that makes sense. Yeah. And the the whole idea, he really pushed Kamenev in training camp because. He said, and I think he said this, he can do so much better. And we need to see him do that. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I would also love to see more. I would, I mean, I need to see Mark Dino get, I want, I want Mark Dino gone. <laughs> Yeah, Marco Dano is Marco Gano for me. Yeah, it's just there is no point. Yes, he picked them off off waivers. Off waivers, the guy doesn't fit. Wave it, wave him again. Hopefully, someone will take him off our hands. And if not, send him down. There, there, there is no point. Why, why give him five minutes a night when you could when you could give somebody else a little bit more? You know, I, I just I don't understand. I don't he, understand. He runs his around and does does things for thing reasons because things. Yeah, it just I yeah yep. End the Dano experiment. It's uh, they needed a warm body and they didn't really want to call someone up. Yeah, so, I just, just wave goodbye to him. Yeah, and it, the other frustration I have is one of the things uh, Bednar had said is we don't want to call young guys up if we're just gonna you know if we if if we want them to just if we're if to just sit you know to know if they if we're calling them up we want them to play and then AJ Greer barely got barely touched the ice when he was up this most recent time. Yeah. I do like that they're keeping prospects. Like if they're home, they'll keep prospects in Loveland. And yeah. If they need them, they'll just have them drive the forty-five minutes up. That's that's so much nicer. It yeah, just no, makes it makes more sense to have your to have your minor league affiliate near you. Yeah, Uber is much cheaper than United. Yeah, <laughs> that is so true. Right on. Let's see. We haven't really touched too much on the goalies. Uh, other than that little five-game schneid, the goalies have mostly been pretty strong. We haven't seen a ton of Grubauer. Um, 
he's he was in the last two games and uh, points in both. Got a got a got a win in uh, Anaheim. I feel like they're getting to the coaches and the players are oh, getting absolutely. used to playing in front of him. Absolutely. I mean, Varlamov is very simple. Let him see the puck clear at the rebounds. Well, Grubauer, I feel like you can get in his way a little bit more, but cover that cross ice pass. Yeah. He is not as he's nowhere near as fast post to post as Varlamov is. Yeah. Very I, few people are. Varlamov's. Watching him, I. I'm reminded a lot of Jean Sebastian Vigier. I was just thinking that. Get out of my brain. Nope. So so yeah. roomy, I like it. <laughs> There's so much space inside my head. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I agree. There's still a lot of adjustment happening, uh, especially on the sense that uh, Grubauer likes to be a little bit more active than, than Varley does as far as playing the puck goes. We saw that come back and bite the team in, in the Vancouver situation there when uh, at the very end of the game where the Avs had just gone and won the game and then there was a little little thing behind the net where Landy wasn't expecting Grubauer to go play the puck and he did and suddenly it was in Landy's feet and panic set in and boom, it was in the net. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Very odd. Very odd. So, all in all, I think again, if the Avalanche are keeping this type of a pace going, this um, ten six and four, so they're twenty four points in twenty games. I mean, you know, you'd you'd like to see them. You'd like to see them ahead of that a little bit more, but that's 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 going to have them right around or a little bit above ninety points. It, it'll get you. It'll get you right around there, yeah. Yeah, so that's I mean that's that's gonna that's that you hope that you, that it doesn't come down to one of those situations where you have like ninety five points and are just just outside the playoffs. But again, 90, if, gives you ninety eight point four. Ninety eight point four, then that'll that that almost assuredly gets you in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's that that's you 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 want to you hope the Avs can keep moving forward here. The Avs have the Kings tonight. Uh, in a building where the Avalanche have not won in what feels like a, a long time. In a building where the Kings haven't won in what feels like a long time either. Indeed, so. indeed. Uh, <laughs> so it's one of those, those – California always tends to be a, a, a tough place for the Avalanche to go play. Hopefully yeah, the fact – really going to just blow the doors off Los Angeles. I hope so. Five, I hope so. Five to one win. I'm Ooh, just going to call right now. Calling it now. Calling his shot. Yep. Who's Tyson you? Jost gets the first goal, too. And Tyson Jost with the Avs Twitter psychic. Excellent, 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 yeah. Uh, it would be wonderful for that to get going, for that to get going for the Avs. I would love nothing more than for the Avs to just put this this L, little L.A., uh, Southern California schneid uh, to, to rest and, and, and realize that it's okay to go ahead and win on the West Coast. Because, um, man, this, you, you this is a team you can, game. Yeah. Before we head off here, there's one thing that I want to really... Um, okay, there are two things I'm upset with. One, okay. that the NHL doesn't have a functional, actual website. Uh, but I'm not going to dig into that because I don't want to go insane. <laughs> but two, the playoff format needs to change. God does it ever. It, it is It is so... It is going to be so crappy when the... Say the Avs get the third seed and they face Winnipeg. And... You you get through Winnipeg, you face Nashville. Yeah. You get through Nashville, you face San Jose. That is that's a gauntlet. Just go one to eight, the the best of the best wins. And dude, why did it was so good the way it was there before? Was, this the four five seed matchup was so good. Yeah, it was changed for the sake of change. When Don't they did it. This. We want to build rivalries bullshit. Yeah, oh, I was, I, yeah, it was horse crap. I have no idea what made them think this was going to be a positive change. Uh, I remember reading something where, where Bettman talked, was, made some comment about how, well, nobody really likes the current playoff format that we have. And I was like, bullshit. No, you. You. you maybe like you. It was, it was play, it was change for the sake of change. One to eight is the way to go. Go back to that. I'm sorry if the eighth seed. I mean, they, the eighth seed plays the one seed currently, but the, this whole mishmash in between, 
with with division stuff is just unnecessary. You can... Here's what it would be currently laid out. Uh, Avs would be playing against Nashville again, and Winnipeg and Minnesota would be playing. In the Pacific, San Jose would be playing Dallas, Calgary and Vancouver would be in the playoff, playoff matchup. If you did it one versus eight, Nashville would play, be playing Vancouver, Winnipeg, Dallas, Minnesota would be playing Colorado, who would that be fun, and San Jose against Calgary. That's so much better. Yeah. I mean, maybe Dallas upsets Winnipeg, and it's not like Nashville gets the first seed, Nashville gets to play the second seed, Winnipeg, in the second round. Again, that's that's a Western Conference final matchup. That's happened every year. They've gone to this nonsense. Well, I mean, Pittsburgh and Washington played in the second round four years in a row. Yeah, you need to stop it. It's garbage. There is the, the, uh, all, that whole nonsense about. I remember saying early on, it's going to lead to repetitive playoff matches, and the and and people are going to get bored with it. Well, and Boom. You, have the tough, you have a tough division that has to get through their own bracket first, and then a weaker division's like, well, this is fun. I mean, how much did Vegas benefit? Oh, immensely. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. How much has the Eastern Conference benefited? <laughs> Vegas walked through walked through Los Angeles, got through San Jose, and then escaped Winnipeg. Yep. Winnipeg had to fight tooth and nail. For their win last year, yep. Then go to Nashville, then beat Nashville, then face Vegas. This is, I mean, just insane. Yeah, no, I'm with you. That they're they, the looking at what it would have been playoff last structure day needs day. needs needs but, to change. Yeah, what it still would have been Nashville, Colorado, and then Los Angeles, Winnipeg, Vegas, San Jose, Minnesota, Anaheim. So Minnesota and Anaheim, that's about a wash. San Jose, Vegas, that's tougher. Winnipeg screams through Los Angeles, yeah. and Nashville still beats the Abs. But and, and yeah, we I think the big and one of the other big frustrations and we already kind of touched on is just you want the you want those marquee matchups to be the conference finals, to be the Stanley right. Cup. You don't want so, it's just I mean that bring back the one through round, Winni- Winnipeg. Worst case scenario. Nashville gets San Jose, and Winnipeg gets gets the winner of Minnesota and Anaheim. Yep. Bring back one through eight. There's no reason for that it should have been changed in the first place. Bring it back. Honestly, I wouldn't be too opposed to just going straight one through sixteen. That'd that would be, make that'd be interesting. Really fascinating. It certainly would be different. That's for sure. Uh, that uh, the only thing that that makes me go well then is the, that makes me wonder about is then why have conferences why have conferences is need <laughs> Ooh. i well when you, you put it that way <laughs> you said something that i'm all for <laughs> i mean think about a playoff format where the top three seats were nashville winnipeg and tampa bay yeah i mean in the top 16 format the abs would not have played made the playoffs well forget that <laughs> And people say, oh, the travel. Well, screw the travel. They they travel nice. <laughs> you, if if you really need to build in an extra day between games and just suck it the fuck up. <laughs> well, we'll end it right there. <laughs> we're, we're about to go down a rabbit hole here. I'm just still fed up over it. Screw it. Indeed. Screw All it indeed. All inductee Gary Bettman sucks in his <laughs> Right on. Well, thanks for sticking with us here on this latest edition of the Burgundy Brigade podcast. Uh, we hope that you all have a uh, have or already had a fantastic Thanksgiving uh, with your you and yours, and uh, we wish you a very, very, very fantastic meal, uh, restful weekend, and uh, start official start to the to the uh, holiday season. All right. Um, so for Aaron, I'm Kevin. Thanks for listening to the Burgundy Brigade podcast. Aaron, man, always fun to chat. Thanks for always doing it. Always fun to chat. You have a good Thanksgiving. You and as I'm well. So thankful for you, by the way. Ba- back at you, man. Back at you. Excellent. Uh, and we are thankful for you as well. Uh, so we'll get out of here. Go abs.